Hi everybody, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs and this is CRAP video number four. CRAP stands for Creative Relaxation and Play and this is where I take a new product and uh, just play around with it and see what it can do. And for this particular video I have found something that's really got me excited. I was at the Dollar Tree the other day and I often like to go to the dollar stores and just browse around and see what they have in their scrapbooking and uh, office supply section and see what kind of interesting little cheap things I can get that I might be able to use in future products and I came across these and these are called chalk writers and they're by a company called Craft Decor. Now you can do a search for this company online and you will find them available through Amazon and different craft stores and things like that and they range in price to about $2.69 uh, American and up. You can get them in sets of 12, 18 and 24 as well. But I found these at the Dollar Tree and the Dollar Tree has everything at it for $1.25. So I got these because said it was a chalk writer and I got thinking okay well um, it says it's it uh, works. Uh, it's erasable when it's wet, and it works on great for chalkboards, dry erase boards, windows, glass, mirrors, ceramic and metal, etc. And I thought, well, at that price, I give it a try just to see. And I was sort of thinking in the back of my head, I'd put it on maybe some uh, of the chalkboard type papers and things like that. I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but it was cheap. So um, I only bought three of the colors that they had in the store: the blue, the purple, and the pink. But uh, when I got them home, took them out of the package and opened them up, wow, look at this. This is designed like a Tim Holtz distress marker. It looks very much like it. It is not like it, but it is very much like it. And it, you know, you can twist it up uh, from the bottom to get more out of it. So I thought, well, what will this look like when it goes on to a project card? So I just did a little scribble. And it's like a crayon kind of a thing and very much like the distress markers so I thought well I wonder what it will do so this is what this video is about I'm going to experiment here uh, using several different methods I have a little list already made up of things I want to try and we'll just see how these work now I want to say from the onset I am not comparing these to the distress markers by Tim Holtz they're a wonderful product you've heard me talk about those before and there are plenty of videos on YouTube showing you how to use those so I'm, this is not a comparison video I'm just going to show you what I can do with these and what I can't do with them so first of all this is a piece of watercolor paper and you can see I just uh, rubbed it on and I also have a piece of regular white cardstock and of course it goes on very smoothly as well. They, they have the texture of a crayon kind of a thing except they're actually a little smoother than a, than a wax crayon. And here's a piece of black. And actually, this is what they were meant to go on. They were, because they're a chalk writer, they're meant to go on something that has a black background, and that shows up really well. Now, the distress markers, I don't think, show up as well on the black, okay? But again, I'm not comparing the two. So, that's very nice. So, the next thing I thought, well, what happens when you rub them with your finger? Because that's how you work with the distress uh, crayons, too. Well, yeah, they will on the watercolor paper. They do smear, but they don't blend all that well out. You still got the background. Let's try it on the white. Same with the white. You can make it uh, blend out, but you're still getting the big block in the center. And on the black, I assume this will be the same. And it is. Okay. So, why don't we add a little water and see what happens? So, the first thing I thought I'd do is I'll take my spray bottle. And just over here on the side, I'm just going to lay down a little water. I'm going to wet my finger and let's see what happens. Whoa! This stuff just melts like um, like a watercolor crayon, you know, like a neon two, which are very, very expensive. But really, you're getting very much the same effect. Let's try it. That was on the watercolor. Let's try it here on the white. Now, the one thing I'm noticing though is I got to keep wetting my finger because it does go dry. Now on the, it blended a little better on the watercolor. Uh, here I'm starting to pull up some paper, so so you don't get, you'd have to be careful with that. And on the cardstock, yeah, it'll blend out too. And the same thing. They are fairly creamy. 
Now, of course, that's a little bit more difficult to see. So the color may be not as brilliant when you start to um, blend it in into the darker, but not bad. So let's just see what happens when we lay down, say, another color. This is the purple. And I'm going to try to um, sort of blend them together. Now, the, when I put it on the black, the black, it kind of, when it, when it was wet, just kind of the, the uh, blue kind of disappeared in the background, as you can see. Okay, I'm just wetting my finger again. And again, you can see. It's not, not a bad blend. The only thing is I have to keep wetting my finger in order to get this. And here you see it's almost disappearing in the black. So I mean, if I put a thicker level or a thicker layer on, that might work better. Okay, let's lay down the third color I bought. And by the way, today after I'm finished making this video, I'm running back out to that dollar stream. I'm buying all the rest of the colors because I looked at the price on getting a set of 24 and not bad on Amazon.ca. Canadian Amazon, it was about $27.99. That's not bad price. But uh, for now, I don't know how much I'm going to use these, so I'm not going to invest in a whole. I have a tendency to overdo it. I often buy everything that's in a set as soon as I find one that I like. I I'm going to hold back. I'm just going to go and buy the rest of the colors they had over there. I think there were three more colors and leave it at that. So I tried this by wetting with my finger. Now I'm going to try it with just misting water on it and see what happens directly on the card. So that's on the watercolor paper. And I'm just sort of doing it all the way through. That's not bad. On the cardstock. It's pretty good too. And of course on the black. Again, it does but you're going to get a much, uh, you're not getting quite as much color out of that. Okay. So, right off the bat, that in itself, I can see making some really interesting backgrounds uh, using just these uh, and some water. But I want to move on to, what else did I put on my list here? Oh, what about a, a water brush? Okay, let's see. Um, I've got a water brush here, so I'm just going to lay down. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry these cards off first and then come back and do the next stage of this. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just going to lay down some more color on each one of these. And I'm going to see how they'll react with... Uh, using a brush. I'm going to use a water brush for this, but you could use just a wet paint brush too. I'm sure same diff. So get my brush going here. Let's see what we can do. Well, on the color, uh, watercolor paper, that works very nicely. So basically you could paint with these like you do with watercolors. And let's try it on the cardstock. And it works equally as well on cardstock. Cardstock's a little thinner, so your paper's going to warp a little bit more, but that's nothing new. And let's try it on the black cardstock. Again, it, it blends, but it doesn't show up that well. In fact, it's almost like I'm taking color off with that. All right, let's just clean up the water brush. All righty, so... So far, so good. Now, what do I want to try next? Oh, I want to try blending them using a blending tool. Same way you would blend uh, distress inks or that kind of thing. For this, I think I'll just move these cards, set them aside for now, get out some new cards. So again, I've got some watercolor here, and I've got some white card stock. White card stock, say that right, and some black card stock. And I've got an ink applicator, mini one, the Tim Holtz mini ink applicator with a foam, uh, new foam, whatever you call it, piece of foam, new foam. Okay, so I think what I would do is, I'm just going to move these out of the way for a second. 
I'm going to just take the chalk writer and I'm just going to on my non-stick craft sheet I'm just going to scribble a little pile right here and first of all I'm going to pick it up dry and just start blending now that works pretty well on here so let's try it on a piece of white cardstock now I think you'd probably use more of these because I've got to put down some more color than you might with the um, the more expensive distress markers Now, as far as blending them and getting, you know, the if I put a little circle there, can I blend it out? Actually, you can. You can sort of blend it out, which is nice. And we'll try it on the black. Now, better put some more color down. Again, you can sort of see it, but it's very, very faint. So I think here on end, I'm not going to do any more testing on black because I think we get the idea. You see, you can see it a little bit. It's very subtle. But I think for the sake of what I'm doing today is I think black is a no-go really with it because um, I'm not sure if that's really worth the effort. So no more testing on black. We're just going to stick to the watercolor and the cardstock. Now, that was dry. Let's see what happens when we get it wet. So I'm going to spray, not spray, I'm going to lay down some more color. Should have laid down maybe one of the different ones, but we'll come back to that. And I'm just going to spritz it a little bit. It's all, it's very soupy now. Whoa. Oh, I like that. On the watercolor, that's fantastic. Let's try it on the cardstock. I'm just picking up the leftover that was on here as well. And that works fairly well too. So that's pretty much a success, I think. Okay, let me clean this up for a second. Now, let's just carry on with this little experiment, but let's change colors. Put that to the side. We'll go back to the watercolor. Let's get out the pink. Do a little spurt. Now, I'm purposely not going to change my pad because I want to see what happens. Oops, I went wet. I was going to do dry, but it uh, eh, doesn't matter. Okay. not cleaning up the uh, putting a new felt on this it basically the blue overpowered the pink okay so let's get out a new pad I gotta find one I've got one down here somewhere there's one okay so let's take that one off New pad on. Just clean this up a little bit. And lay down some pink again. Now first let's just, well we know what it's going to do when it's dry, but let's just try it dry. Okay, I'm picking up some color on here. Now maybe, depending on the color you use, maybe some cover better than others. So let's try this wet. Seems to work a little better, at least the pink does, in uh, when it's wet. Now I've been, got little bits here of the paper. It's, I'm pilling the paper a little bit, but that's because of the water. So let's switch over and put down a little bit more. Hmm. 
might be giving it too much water too. Now I was saying that I see these little bits in here and I was thinking that might be the paper pilling but now I think it's not the paper pilling it is actually the crayon or the chalk writer I think it's not totally dissolving when I do that but the effect isn't bad so definitely has potential here as well so watercolor cardstock okay um, what do we want to try next? So we've done it, we've tried it with a dry finger, we've tried it with a wet finger. We've misted it with water, we've used a wet brush, and we've used a blending tool. Okay, next thing I want to try is working with stencils with this. When we come back, we'll do that. Okay, this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it. Um, I'm going to apply a coat of the color solid onto the cardstock. This is the watercolor again, this is the regular cardstock. Then I'm going to put the stencil on top of it and I'm going to use a baby wipe to wipe through to see if I can remove some of the color and see what what effect we get with that. I do this effect with the Tim Holtz Distress Crayons and I know it's going to work fine with those. So let's just see how these will work. So again, we want to lay down some color so I'm going to use, um, it's almost dry here, it's pretty much dry. Uh, ink applicator for this. I'm going to scribble some color and I'm going to do this dry. Now I can see right now that in terms of blending with an ink blender at least on the uh, watercolor paper, you do get some areas where you can see the um, little ridges here. And I'm going to lay down some more color and I'm going to do the same thing on the white cardstock. So, as far as using a mini ink blending tool with this in the manner that you would do if you were using uh, distress inks. You really don't get um, as smooth a coverage. However, I'm not finding that as being a major detriment because quite frankly I suck at even getting the distress inks to blend without some uh, you know, some of these little rings happening. Tim Holtz does it really well. Well, he should. Lots of practice is his product. Okay. Now, you can see, to get this kind of color, I've had to use a fair amount of this. So, economically speaking, you could probably go through one of these pretty quick. So, you know, there's the trade-off. You buy the more expensive, and the, uh, let's see if I can get rid of this glare for a second use the expensive and you get sorry about that with the lighting I'm just trying to get less glare on it um, so the more expensive the product the longer it goes I guess you get what you pay for but these were cheap okay so I'm going to lay my stencil down this is the watercolor I'm going to take a fresh baby wipe so it's wet and I'm just going to hold the stencil down and wipe through and I can see right now that the color is coming off and that's not bad that's kind of a nice effect now that's the watercolor paper let's try it on the white cardstock and yep that works really well so hold these up so you can see them a little better So, yeah, that works well. So, that was with a baby wipe um, to get that pattern off there. So, I think that's something. I really like that. So, what's next? 
Well, so we tried them with stencils, and there's probably other things you could do with them on stencil too. Like, I'm wondering, could you take these? I'm just going to take a piece of the uh, white cardstock. I wonder if you could turn your stencil into a stamp with these. So let's take. We'll, use, we'll stick with the purple for now. I'm going to put it down. I'm going to wet it. I'm going to use this. And I'm just going to stamp all over my stencil. And then I'm going to take my stencil and turn it upside down. Place it on my card, and I think I'll take a piece of scrap copy paper and then just rub, trying not to move the stencil. Rub it well and see what we get. Well, here's what we got nothing. So it doesn't work that well with that either. So, okay. So that little experiment did not work. All right. So let me do some cleanup here and then I'm going to get out some rubber stamps and we're going to see what we can do with rubber stamps. Okay, so let's now see what will happen if I put it on a rubber stamp. Now I'm thinking, you know, you can use Tombow markers for this kind of thing and uh, you can use acrylic paint to stamp with. So I wonder if we can stamp with this. So I'm just going to take one of the colors here and I'm going to apply it directly onto my rubber stamp. And all I'm doing is I'm going over it, just sort of coloring it in. And I'm not being all that careful about how, um, how well I'm covering this over. Okay, so I've applied that directly to stamp. Now I'm going to stamp it. I will get out my stamping pad just to give me, because my surface is very hard here. So this is the watercolor paper. Give it some firm pressure. Well, that's not bad. It's not a, a real uh, deep impression. So let's try it on the white card stock. Now I am going to reapply a little bit. And basically, I got about the same thing. Not bad. This would work fine in an art journal as a background. Okay. So then, let's uh, let's hit it with a little water. I'm not going to reapply anything. I'm just going to mist it. Okay, I've missed it a little bit. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. And I'm just going to missed it again. I'm not going to reapply any more color to it, so this is not going to be that dark, but just for the sake of the demo. Ooh, that's pretty good too. Yeah, so as far as stamping is concerned, it works equally well um, dry or wet. So that's pretty good. All right, so um, I was going to say I had two other ways of applying the uh, marker on this. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. My other way of doing it was going back and uh, I'll, I'll stick to the blue because I haven't cleaned the stamp off that well. Putting it onto my craft mat and then hitting it with a little water on that so it gets a little watery and then just sort of rubbing the stamp into it. And that worked pretty good too on the watercolor paper. It gives sort of a watercolor effect. I don't know if it's much different from what I did with uh, just applying it directly. Let's try it on the white cardstock. Yeah, I'm very similar there too. Might be a little bit more of a watercolor really color effect because it's a little bit blurred. But that works pretty good as well. And what was the other thing I was going to try? 
Um, apply it with a brush. Okay. I don't know if I need to bother trying to apply it with a brush. I don't think there's any advantage to that. So I'm not going to bother uh, with it. All right. So we've tested it with several different uh, methods of applying it. Now, the one thing I want to know is how, if I was to use this in an art journal, how um, permanent is it? And I have a feeling it'll reactivate with water. So let's go back to those ones I did at the very beginning. And, uh, oh, one thing I, I forgot I want to try, and I'll try it on the watercolor paper, is I'm going to use, just splatter some water onto this. So little droplets. So, um, Tim Holtz sprayer that I'm using, if you only pull it halfway, it'll sort of blot. Maybe. And I'm just going to set that aside while I do this next thing, just to see if I get some um, watermarks out of that. So, these are dry now. Yeah. So I'm wondering, if I put another wet medium on top of them, will they blur? So, how to test this out? Well, actually, I'll just use my water brush. Get it juicy, and let's see if this reactivates. And my answer is yes, it does reactivate. Yeah, there, see? Yeah. Once the water gets flowing to it and it gets into it, it will reactivate. So this is not permanent when it dries. So you'd have to treat it the way you would dis, uh, treat distress ink and that kind of thing. If you're going to use it in your art journal and you're going to lay wet medium on top of it, you need to put a workative fixative over top of it or some of Tim Holtz's micro glaze um, over top of that to protect it. And then you could, you then you could put your wet mediums on top of it. And I'm this is not a surprise. I'm pretty much was certain that this would not go, um, would not go permanent. Okay, let's go back to this one that I'm trying to do water spots on and the water's still sitting on top of it now this is water color paper let's give it a quick dry and see if we get anything now my initial thought on this is we're probably not going to see water drops on it because this stuff is kind of waxy so I doubt that it will do anything. And, and right now, the water that I sprayed on it is staying on top. Let's just mop it up a bit. And no. We aren't getting anything. So it's no good for that. The last thing I want to try is splattering. So let's just take uh, let's take one of these. This is watercolor, and let's do a little scribble. And let's make it a bit soupy. And I'll just take a regular paintbrush for this. I'm getting this real runny. And let's see what happens. Get that out of the way. And just like acrylic paint, yes, you can splat it. So there's another effect that you could get on this too. So yeah. So what did we do? Let me just do a quick review here. So first of all, we tried it on watercolor paper, regular white cardstock, and regular black cardstock. We came to the conclusion that it works well on watercolor paper and it works well on white cardstock, but on black colored, uh, black or dark cardstock, uh, it doesn't show up all that well. Which is kind of ironic because they call it a chalk writer. 
And so my assumption was that uh, chalk background, now maybe if you used actual chalk background, like with chalkboard paint or the chalkboard papers, maybe it would show up better on those. But as far as black card stock is concerned, mm, I don't think I would use it on those. Um, so I tried putting it on with just a dry finger and it really doesn't move. Uh, it will move though if you wet your finger. Um, misting it with water uh, will allow it to move uh, too, makes it a little bit more runny. Um, using a wet brush works well with it and the blending tool works well with it as well, but it works um, both dry and wet. But in terms of its coverage and how well it blends together, um, it isn't as nice as a more expensive product. But still very usable, especially if you're just doing backgrounds, you're going to be covering a lot of that up. With stencils, it worked very well using the baby wipe through the stencil technique. Uh, but it doesn't work very well as uh, using it to create a negative from a stencil uh, or using a stencil like a rubber stamp. Rubber stamps, it worked really well with the rubber stamps, uh, directly applying it right to your stamp. But it also worked well uh, uh, dry and it worked well, even better I think, when you uh, missed it, uh, the stamp, after you would put the color onto it with some water. And also you could dip your stamp into like a little puddle of it, like this here, and that worked very well too. It gave you a, a, a watercolor effect, and that worked well on both uh, types of paper. Uh, as far as the permanent test concerned, it is not permanent, so you're going to have to lay something down over top of it as a barrier if you're going to use it in an art journal or whatever and put more wet medium on top of it. So, overall, what's my assessment of this product? I like it. At $1.25 at the Dollar Tree for one of these, I think it's a bargain. I think you're getting your money's worth out of it. Um, and if you don't want to invest in something like the Distress Crayons uh, or the more expensive products, for now, until you figure out whether or not you're going to really use those kind of things, if you like that technique, then really, this is a way to go. So, I hope you enjoyed this crap uh, video and uh, yeah I'm running out now to buy the rest of the colors in these and if I do some more backgrounds in my art journals and things featuring these I'll be sure to show it to you so thanks for watching bye bye